Okay, so I got my GPD Win 2 finally. I was not able to get a review unit, so my retail unit arrived a week ago. And we're going to take a look at it now, and I think we'll find out whether it's good or not. Alright folks, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the GPD Win 2 which I just received. Now this is the GPD Win 2 retail version. I'm going to be doing a bunch of tests. I'm going to be showing uh, some of the battery life. I'm going to be talking about the physical aspect of the device. I'm going to be comparing it to my Nintendo Switch uh, with a game that I own on the Switch and on the Win as well. So let's get right into it. So the GPD Win 2 is the successor to the GPD Win 1 which if you've seen my review before I was very impressed with and I really enjoyed that system. Played a lot of PC games on it, mostly old school. So the GPD Win 2 is a more powerful device and it is more effective in playing games that are a bit more modern. Not all of them, but most of them. And there, there have been a bunch of uh, improvements on the system. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you'll notice about the GPD Win 2 is the physical form. It's a much better build. It's a bit more bulkier. It's a bit heavier, but it's not uncomfortable. It's still very comfortable to hold. Now the triggers have been changed as well. So as you can see over here, you have your L1, L2, and you have an L3 trigger here. Now this takes a while to get used to, but after a while, I found it more comfortable than the traditional form of having L3 inside the system. And you have your R1, R2, and your R3 right here and on the port side you have your USB 3 you have your type C USB which is for charging and you can also use it for HDMI um, and this is I think this is like a mini HDMI sort of thing it has your SD card slot it has the headphone jack now on the bottom you'll see it's marked SSD so this uses a special type of um, M.224 something kind of SSD which is removable you can just unscrew it and you can upgrade the SSD it comes with a 128 and it's pretty fast I'm not going to go into the whole benchmark thing but it's fast enough and it's pretty good the vent is for your airflow now GPD uses a new kind of cooling uh, solution compared to the Win 1 which was a manual solution this is an automatic solution so the fan turns on automatically and it works pretty well. The, I've actually opened this device to reset my BIOS and the fan, the cooling solution is pretty solid. It works well. Um, it's not noisy per se, but you may hear a little bit of it if you're playing on low volume. If you're playing on high volume, you really won't hear this as much. And you have the vents back here also. This flap is removable. I'm not going to do it now because then it's a pain to get back. Uh, I think it's more for customizing your GPD Win 2. Going inside, you have your layout, which is a little bit different from the Win 1. You can see the keys are color-coded, so you have your A, B, X, Y. And if you look closely, they are coded for the PlayStation controller as well. You can see a small X over there, and you can see a small circle, and triangle, square, so you don't get confused. You can tell that this device is made by gamers, for gamers, so they really knew what they were doing. And the D-pad is good. It's much better than the Win 1. It's actually one of the best G, uh, the best D-pads GPD has done. Maybe the Q7 was really good. But for what you're going to be using it for retro games, it's pretty good. For fighting games, it's pretty good. Um, there are videos of people playing fighting games with the D-pad. You can watch Fox's video or Skeleton. They do a good job of it. Your analog... Um, sticks these are sticks they are not nubs very similar to the ps vita in fact i think they are the same as the ps vita uh not entirely but the shape is sort of similar and it's very good they are solid i don't have a dead zone issue or anything like that with it uh, i've played a bunch of first person shooters and they're really good compared to the nintendo switch which has terrible sticks these are freaking horrible for playing first person shooters. I don't know what Nintendo was thinking. Um, they're not good for shooters. They're not good for fighting games. This is this is crap. Basically, it's crap. Um, I don't know what Nintendo was thinking, but they, these are really good. They're solid. So they're not clickable because you already have your internal clicks in there. So it's not an issue. And then over here, there's an extra L3 button. I'm not sure why they added that there it's maybe because they're so hardcore into gaming they realize that some people need to use run right away so you press l3 and you can run 
in certain games, maybe that's why. Uh, again, the gamer mindset is there through, through and throughout with this system. Um, your WASD is a little bit um, bulkier. I don't know if it's bulkier, but it's kind of shaped in a different way if you look at it. So you can tell they were thinking about that as well. The keyboard is decent. It's much better than the Win 1. It's not perfect. You're still going to be using your thumbs to type, but it works well. So let's get into the system, the main part. So I'm going to be testing a few games, and I'm also going to be telling you about the battery life. So now, before I get into that, I need to address Linus. Now, I really like Linus Tech Tips. Like It's one of like my favorite review channels, and the overview he did of this device was terrible. He really did not understand how to test the device. He really did not show off any of the games that actually do work really well. And he kind of negated most of these things. Now, I get it, he's a busy guy, but there's an ethical responsibility when you're taking a system and you're going to be showing it off to millions and millions of people, especially with a big channel. You know, a company makes something that is interesting to an enthusiast. If it's a bad product, yes, prove it. Say it, it's a bad product. If it's a good product, show it. Show the good parts. But that overview was so bad that I, ha I had a hard time, you know, just going through the comments. It was just terrible. I'm not a fanboy. I've given bad reviews to GPD as well for certain devices. But what's fair is fair. And that was a very, very unfair overview. And I think it kind of turned off a lot of people. So leaving that out, this is an enthusiast device. So uh, as you know, enthusiasts are people who like to tinker with their cars, who like to tinker with their laptops, so on and so forth. If you do not like to tinker with stuff, do not buy this because it's not for you. You probably won't enjoy this stuff. If you like to tinker, like if you know what XTU is, which is over here, let me go. Um, sorry, the mouse is slow, but we'll get there. So if you know what XTU is, if you know how to undervolt, if you know how to overclock, these are, they're not complicated things, they're very small things. You can get an amazing experience out of this device. You can get great battery life, you can get games to play. You should have the basic knowledge of how to tweak INIs, you should know how to lower shadows or increase texture re resolution, all stuff in games. You should know those basics. If you know those small basics, you will have a blast with this system. If you don't know them, you probably won't enjoy it as much because you'll probably just run a game and say, hey, it doesn't work. That is not who this device is for. It's for enthusiasts and I think you should really know what you're doing if you want to enjoy the system to its fullest. Now, barring all that, let's go into games. So, I have a few games here and I do have emulators as well. So I'm go the first one I'm going to start with is Fallout 4, which was a game that did not run well on the Win uh, 1 as well. It was pretty bad. It actually didn't run at all. So I'm not going to be using any mods, but you can see over here on my XTU profile, I do have follow Fallout 4 uh, at 5 watts. So basically what this means, uh, like if I just go like a brief overview, Watts means it lowers the amount of power your CPU usage uses. Try that again. It lowers the amount of the CPU power that is being used by your system, hence giving you better battery life and giving you good frame rate. So the good frame rate means we're targeting 30, not more than that. So let's start with Fallout. So I've got Fallout 4 loading up here. I did forget to mention the speakers. See, the speakers are placed right here, and this is an excellent position. Um, the Win 1 had a mono speaker, which was not as effective, but these speakers are really good, especially if you tune them properly with the inbuilt equalizer from Realtek. They sound great, and I'm surprised more laptop manufacturers don't use front-facing speakers like this. It's really effective. So uh, here we are in a rather dense kind of populated area now my fallout 4 ini has been tweaked so you can see i've turned off shadows and still it looks pretty good some of the effects are on you can see right there you have your bloom effect or whatever it's called and it runs very very well i played this for about three hours and 45 minutes, 3 hours and 45 minutes from 90%. So it, it was a pretty good run. I enjoyed it. I did not have any hiccups. Um, I played it with a lot of enemies on screen, etc. I didn't have any issues. I have turned the sound off. Let me see it turn it on. Oh, the music is on, so I'm going to get copyrighted, which we don't want. 
there's actually oh yeah there you go there's an explosion right there so yeah it runs well you know I don't have a, the resolution has been tweaked to I think 100 1024 by 600 and the shadows have been turned off everything else is at uh, low except for textures I think textures are at medium um, yeah and it's a very very good in experience again this was not shown in any of the mainstream reviews and I have no idea why this is a really really basic thing to do I mean if you're gonna revo review a device like this you gotta put in the work without the work is you can't review this device so as you can see it runs really well it looks decent if you wanted a po portable version of Fallout 4 you will have a blast playing this. I'll try to make another video for configs and stuff. So let's move on. So the next uh, game I'm going to be testing is Wolfenstein 2. Now, as you know, Wolfenstein 2 is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. I will do a comparison if I can, because I will buy it for the Switch. I have not played this game on my PC, on my Alienware. I've only tried it on this. Um, it runs really well. I have capped the FPS to 30. I've changed the settings to the lowest possible with scale at 50 and the resolution at about 970 by 544, something like that. And it's run, it runs fine. It averages around 24, 23 to 30 FPS. Most times it's at, it's at 30. So I have turned the sound in. I'm sorry, this is not an action level. Uh, and there's a bit hiccup on the load because I am running this from my SD card. Let me lower the volume. The volume is really, really high. Let me see if I can load up a more action-oriented level. So you can get a good idea. So there you go, that's some combat right there. Some of the settings have been turned on. This is not fully at low actually. Uh, the HDR and Ocul Oculision has been turned on. Uh, because I like the game to look a little bit good and it runs well. It's stable at 30 FPS. And the only reason the Switch would edge out on this is because the Switch has an NVIDIA GPU which is more optimized. If this had a more optimized GPU, I think it would run even better. But for the most part, it runs well. Um, I have played to the submarine level, as you can see. Uh, so I'm going to move on from this one. So Dark Souls 3. Now I have lowered the settings in this game uh, quite a bit. Not the graphic settings per se, but mostly the resolution. So the big thing I did uh, modify was the resolution so you can see it's uh, at 960 by 544 and the quality sec settings are custom um, lighting quality is at medium and everything most of it is at low yeah most of, except for lighting quality so let's see how it functions now I'm not a Dark Souls fan I know Dark Souls 1 remaster is coming out for the switch but I'm surprised they haven't released like 2 and 3 because if it runs on this it should run on the switch because the switch has a really good GPU um, maybe they will in the future but on the win 2 it runs very well and you as you can see it looks really good too I mean I'm surprised how good it looks so this is a fairly big area um, and I have gotten a bit addicted to this game since I started playing it. Um, let's go. There, there was a dragon here or something. Where's the dragon? Well, I can never find stuff that I need when I need it. I wanted to show more of an open area combat. The dragon is there. I think I passed the dragon already. Okay. And also, this is running at about 5.50 watts, so you can get a good 4 hours of this game on battery, or at least 3.5 three hours to 4 hours, um, if you tweak it properly in XTU and Undervolt. Okay, there we go. But this is not the sort of combat I wanted to show. He's going to kill me. 
Uh, this area is too dark. I haven't put up fraps or any FPS meters because those actually do affect the sort of uh, gameplay. So I prefer not to put that on here. Oh, this is a rather large area. Let's try to kill this dude. Alright, buddy. Let's go. And in typical Dark Souls fashion, I did not plan for this to happen. The frustrating thing about this game is when you die, you have to just come all the way and kill all these guys again. I guess people like the difficulty. I find it frustrating. But the game is really, really good. So it's very effective. It runs well. You can dodge attacks. I played uh, the first boss and it was running really well. I did not have an auto... Oh my god, I forgot about this guy. This is another boss and I'm dead. I'm dead. So let's move on to the next one. So Metroid Samus Returns. So you can play 3DS games on this. Uh, the ones that are optimized well with Citra usually work really well because the CPU is very powerful. I did not go into the specs because there are plenty of videos about that. It has a dual core M, core M processor really powerful it works well for most emulators you can play PlayStation 2 games you can play 3DS games I will test the PlayStation 2 game but we'll start with the 3DS game um, this build does not have a save state as at least as far as I can tell so I'm gonna have to load this up so we are a bit more in game um, I have turned off the sound again the sound is Pretty, pretty good. It's fine. I don't see any hiccups and you can see the gameplay is pretty good. Uh, the keys are working. Uh, there's not much I can tell you about this game because I haven't played it on my 3DS. Um, I heard it's pretty good. Uh, but I just wanted to show that it runs. It runs really well and I think the be the more they work on the emulator they are going to make the game better um, make the games run better I see so yeah it's a pretty cool device I mean it runs 3DS <laughs> that's amazing again something that a mainstream reviewer which I really like did not touch on which is pretty weird okay let's move on so this is Dying Light now Dying Light I have tweaked the I and E I've turned off the shadows to some extent I've not turn them off completely but I put them really low and the game works really well the resolution has been down to 1024 by 5 something 500 and something um, the lowest possible resolution on this uh, game and it works really well in fact I played about four hours and ten minutes of dying light now if you if you try to do that playing this game on battery without tweaking anything you won't get that kind of battery life you have to undervolt your CPU using XTU and use proper volts for each game so this one is just running on 5.50 granted this is a indoor area I'll try to exit it out and show you the outdoors I really like this game um, I played a shit ton of it in my regular PC and I'm so happy that I can play it effectively on my GPD Win 2. Let's go. There you go. So this is an outdoor area. Um, oh, let me see if I can find some zombies to kill. So I can get the FPS much higher, but I've aimed it like at 30 FPS because I want good battery life. And hop on him. Hop, kick, kick. This is the best part. Especially when you get the drop kick, that's really cool. Oh, I'm about to die. So. This is not typically how I play this game. It's just that I'm I'm looking at the viewfinder, the camera, and yeah, it's a, not 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 a good way to play. I've forgotten how to run. So let's run a run a bit more. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of zombies.
Well, so it runs well. Um, I don't have any issues. It's pretty smooth. I'd say it's about at 26 to 30 FPS. Just for my eyeballs. And yeah, so let's move on out of Dying Light. So this is the PlayStation 2 emulator. Um, oops, got the sound on. And we're going to be playing uh, Contra. I really like Contra and I have not played this one. Um, and I tried it, I really liked it. So PlayStation 2 emulation works really well. Like most games run really well, especially if you have the PAL version. Now this is running the NTSC version and I don't have any problems with it. I haven't configured the wattage, so it's running at, I think, about 7 to 8 watts, uh, whatever the default is. So you can see the movement is smooth. The sound is also really good. I, I don't want to turn on the sound because then we will have a problem. So PlayStation has a huge library, and if you wanted to try out your old PlayStation games in a portable fashion, this is the only device that can do it. There is no other device that can play PlayStation 2 games portably. Not even the ones on, um, not even your phone, because even the fastest Snapdragon processor, which I believe is the 845 as of 2018, cannot do proper PlayStation emulation. So if you want uh, PlayStation 2 emulation, so if you want PlayStation 2, if you want good 3ds emulation the gpd win 2 is your only option you can play like the huge rpgs you can play the whole huge action games um yeah very effectively now well i think i'll just probably end it here i think you get a good idea of what's going on screen so let's head out to the next one so this is immortal redneck um it's one of the really cool shooting games, uh, roguelike shooting games on the Nintendo Switch and you can play it on your PC as well. So now I wanted to do this game in particular as a comparison between the Nintendo Switch and the GPD Win 2. Now you can see, if, if you look closely, um, I don't know if you'll notice on the video, if you look closely, on the GPD Win 2, you can make this game look a lot sharper. Even though the resolution is not very high, it's at 1024 by 574 it looks much sharper. Not because the GPD Win 2 is more powerful, it's mainly because um, on your Nintendo Switch, they put like anti-aliasing, they put FXAA or TXAA, which makes the look, game look really blurry and really low res than it should be. So it's not a really fun way to play this game, but on the Switch, uh, I mean on the on the Win 2, the game is much more fun to play because you can turn off your FXAA, you don't have to deal with that, you can turn off some of the motion blur, which is a huge problem in the Switch version. And it even feels a lot better because these analogs are really, really accurate. Like, they feel like, you, it almost feels about 90% close to what you'd be playing on a PS4 or Xbox 360 control. That's how good they are. And especially the rumble feature, which I forgot, the Win 2 does rumble. And surprisingly, it's better than the HD rumble on the Switch. Now, I'm not saying the Win 2 is better than the Switch. I'm just saying for some games, the Win 2 is more effective. Now, we don't know how Wolfenstein 2 is going to run on the Switch. I think it'll be better because of the NVIDIA, NVIDIA GPU. But I simply cannot forgive the analog stick controller. And, well, the D-pad, you know, we can fix that issue, but... It's a bit iffy. Also, on the Switch, you can play really good exclusives like Fire Emblem Warriors and some of the Mario games. But on the GPD Win 2, on the other side, you can play the same games, um, which the older games, like the Wii games, which are emulated in a sharper way. You can play some of the games uh, in a sharper image, like Immortal Redneck, because you have more options to configure and tweak. So it's a trade-off either way. Um, the battery life, I would say the Win 2 wins this one because if you tweak your system properly, you can get up to four hours of battery life. With the Switch, uh, in Immortal Redneck, I get about 
three three hours and ten minutes of battery life depending on the brightness on the wind 2 my brightness is always at zero because the screen is plenty bright enough unless I'm outdoors indoors I don't have an issue with brightness so I just wanted to show this small comparison so you get an idea of what it's like playing on the switch and on the wind 2 uh, there are pros and cons this uh, the switch is a lot lighter it's uh, I don't know about more portable, but it is a lot lighter and, you know, the controllers come off. It's a cool device. I really like it. I play Skyrim on it all the time. But then, on the Win 2, you can play Skyrim with mods. So, you know, I, it's very hard. Like, if I was going someplace really far, like, I travel a lot uh, just for fun and I would probably take my Switch. Not because the Win 2 is bad, it's just because it's... A bit lighter and it's a lot easier for me to carry but if I was going to like say another city or something where I know there's gonna be wall outlets all the time I'll probably take my win too and just have a bunch of retro games on it um, I do have more games which are on the switch and the win as well Yoku's Island Songbringer which is an excellent game and you can get like six hours of battery life if you play those games because you just underwall to four watts and it's pretty good. I'm sorry for the techno jargon, but as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is a tech enthusiast kind of device. So, now we've tested 3DS games, we've tested high-end Wolfenstein game, uh, high-end games like Wolfenstein, Fallout 4. Um, I have Saints Row the Third, which it runs really well. I don't even have to show it. Like, you can just run it even with some high settings. Um, another game I have is Vampire. It runs really well. Vampire is actually a new game. Actually, um, I should have actually shown this game. I said actually too many times. So this is Vampire, um, another game which recently came out, and it's it's a new game which runs really well. Um, the VOD on this is about 5.50. Um, I could increase it and make the game run even better, but I don't want to go past 30 FPS. So this is a loading, so it's a bit stuttery when it's loading, but it will be fine after that. So there you go. It's running really smooth. I've actually killed everyone here, so I cannot show you combat. Um, and I'm sorry the game is dark. It's a vampire game, so this is probably not going to show too well. Um, how do I get out of here? Well, I think you get the idea. It, it runs well. <laughs> I'm not going to fumble around, like if you decide to play this game on the Win 2, it will run well. And this is actually with some of the effects on, and you can make it run even way better if you really wanted to. So let's exit out of this one. So now that we're done with testing all the games and I've told you a little bit about the battery life, what do I think about the Win 2? The Win 2 is a great device, and um, I do have to mention some of the flaws. There aren't many, but there are some flaws. Now. Uh, this is the retail version, so this is not a prototype. There, There is a prototype review, and I think there's some retail versions as well. Um, the retail version of this device does have some things with the BIOS which you have to configure. I'm not going to get into that. You probably want to watch Fox's video. I think he's probably going to do another one. Um, you got to watch that video and learn about the BIOS because he does a really good job in that. Um, there are some issues with the BIOS where it throttles your CPU, so you have to turn off certain things and turn on certain things. Uh, again, tweaking. The big flaw with um, the Win 2 is the weight. I think it's it's a bit heavy. Uh, not uncomfortable, but I think it's uh, it can be a bit of an inconvenience at times. Like I like to wear. Um, you know my track suits or whatever it is and they're pretty loose sometimes and I put this and it weighs them down it kind of feels weird uh, so it's not that uh, pocket friendly but you you could fit it in a jean and stuff and it works well it's just the weight is a little bit of a, you know problem and it's like it's like a give and take the weight is because of the battery you know this I think ha it has two four thousand eight hundred um, what our batteries in it two of them so it's like about eight something you know nine nine thousand watt hours or whatever it is the legal limit so that's why it can hold a big charge 
Um, the other thing is that I have to talk about is the charger. Now, this charger is very iffy. Like you can easily destroy your wind too. If you use a wrong charger, it can do. It can really mess up your wind too. You probably have to open it to reset the BIOS. So make sure that you use a charger which is approved by GPD or. It, that the community has talked about just don't don't try to use like random chargers you know because uh there are people who have messed up their wind twos like that so that is another thing the 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 usb type c charging is a bit iffy when it comes to other chargers and also if you have older um power banks they won't work on this because this uses 12 volts. You need a PD output of 12 volts and a PD charger at that, a USB-C to USB-C charger. So, you know, that's going to be an extra expense. I don't think you need it because, I mean, the charge is pretty good unless you're going on a flight like 14, 15 hours like me. Um, you probably don't need a power bank like that. Um, the USB-C port. I mean, sorry, the, the US, the regular USB port. Now, um, the thing is, it's a bit tight. Like when I try to put any of my USB connections into it, I really have to jam it in and I have to really pull it out. And I'm kind of afraid that I'll break this port. It's a bit too tight. This may not be the case in everyone's unit, but in my unit, this is the case. Uh, so that is another thing. It, it, It's just nitpicking. It's not like a, you know, it's not like a big flaw. Uh, when it comes to opening this device, it's pretty easy. It has seven screws. Again, I would refer you to Fox's video where he does an excellent job of how to replace your batteries and all that. Um, now, since I told you that this is an enthusiast device, Uh, believe it or not, when you're tweaking, you are going to screw up. A lot of us do screw up and you probably have to open it and disconnect your battery and put it back together. It's not a big task. It's very easy to do, very simple. Um, so, you know, that's a thing that you probably have to deal with given what this device is. Um, as far as other things, I, I don't know. I have a hard time thinking about flaws. Okay, there is one thing. There are certain games which uh, detect the Xbox 360 controllers. You can see the, this has two modes. It has Xbox 360 and it has your mouse mode. When you put it on Xbox 360, there are certain very, very few Unity games which try to detect this as a direct input and it's like a conflict. So your controller will become unresponsive. It's in very few games. Like I think it's Enter the Gun Dungeon and Wizard of Legends. Those are two games that have that issue. Uh, but I think they have patches for that to fix that because it tries to go between direct and Xbox 360 input. So that is an issue. Um, other than that, I really, I really don't see any flaws with this device. Uh, like, you know, if I was a mainstream reviewer, I would tell people that, you know, if you are a hardcore PC gamer and you are an enthusiast, you should definitely buy this device. You know, it's, there is no flaw. Otherwise, oh, sorry, there is one thing like crazy because you're going to effectively block this vent over here it has a small nudge but this nudge is really not enough so you kind of need like support or something because it, it, i don't think it was designed to be you know sitting like that if you're playing it like this it's you know not an issue i didn't have any issue with thermal thr throttling there was no throttling like it goes like stable at 85 degrees celsius um the only problem i had was Power limiting, again, that's a BIOS issue. It's not like a, you know, hardware issue. It's just a BIOS setting issue, which I worked it out. Um, if you guys want a video on that, um, I probably, I'll try to make one, you know, with some stuff about that. Or I, I don't know. Again, I think Fox will probably do a better job. He has a retail unit as well. Um, so the Win2 is a great device and uh, you guys should definitely check it out if you can you know, handle some of the tweaking stuff. Um, great battery life. I don't know what else I can say. Uh, and for those people who compare it to the Switch, now they're different devices, you know, at the end of the day, yes, you can play some of the same games as a Switch, but the Switch has its pros, the Win2 has its pros. Like if I wanted to play Doom on the Win2, I can. If I want to play Doom on this, I can. The difference is on this, I'm going to have to tweak a little bit. In this, I just turn on play. On this, I can use mods, I can use snap map. On this, I can't use mods, can't use snap map, but easier to use. Easy, complex, but fun, interesting, you know? So it, 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 there's a back and forth.
Like so, uh, I won't say that buy this over Switch or Switch over this. I I I would like to own both di devices. Like in an ideal world, you would probably have both devices as well. So the comparison is invalid. Um, the Win Two is a great device. I want to thank Wade uh, because my IgG order actually got canceled. I was a backer, but it got canceled. Uh, so I had to go through GPD and it was a whole thing with like the payments up, but I finally got it and I'm very happy that I received it. Um, I hope they fix the BIOS issues and I look forward to what they do next. So as always, thank you for watching the video. If you like it, go ahead and like it. If you dislike it, go ahead and dislike it.